so we just now saw what uh, are the vulnerabilities with port 21 that is ftp we'll see one more and i will give you one more task as homework so we'll uh, start with one of these ports either 80 23 25 22 22 is secure shell port 80 is your uh, T uh, tcp that is http 25 is smtp simple mail transfer protocol and 23 is telnet any idea what is telnet any answers Telnet is basically a protocol which is used to create remote connections. But the only drawback of Telnet is Telnet is not secured. Data flowing through Telnet is not encrypted. That is the main reason that anyone who has got access to the network can easily identify that. What exactly is flowing through that network. So to uh, avoid that, we need something called as SSH, Secure Shell. So let's start. Go back to our Kali terminal. Again, the initial steps will remain same. That is NBT scan, NMAP, NMAP will remain same. Only thing that is going to change is we are now going to focus on port number 22 instead of 23 or 21. Right. So I will enter 22 over here. Rest of the things will remain same. Press enter. Now, as we told earlier that if vulnerability is shown, then it's really a straightforward attempt to exploit. But if vulnerability is not shown, then what to do? As you can see over here, can you see any vulnerability mentioned over here? No, it's simple nmap scan. There is no vulnerability shown over here. Then what to do? So over here, vulnerability is not shown. Still, we can launch an attack on this. How? Have you heard about brute force password cracking technique brute force attack? Yes. So that is what we are going to use today. Obviously, brute force will take a very long time because it matches each and every ID with each and every password and tries to uh, guess the password using a word list, something called as a word list. Word list is nothing but a huge list of passwords. You can download the word list. You can make use of that word list and carry out a brute force attack. We are having a very limited time. So what we will do, we'll, we will create our own word list. So let's see how to go ahead. Now, no vulnerability is found out. So we will again go back to the MSF console on the left hand side. As you can see, now I have two terminals. So to begin or to uh, initialize MSF or uh, Metasploit framework, you can go to applications and you can click on Metasploit over here under exploitation. Or you have a second way that is simply write MSF console. MSF console and enter. It will do the same thing. It will start the Metasploit framework inside Kali terminal. Now we know that we are now performing an attack on which protocol, which port, sorry, protocol we are performing the attack on SSH, right? So for that, we will search SSH. But in this case, we will search for something called as SSH. If we take some time, now it's a huge list again, 161 different, different cases here. Out of this, we are going to find something called as SSL login, SSL underscore login. So try to find it if uh, you're able to find it. Why do we find it? Because we know that that particular vulnerability is present, is present as in we are going to perform brute force authentication, brute force password cracking. We are trying to log into the system, right? So we are trying to crack the password and for cracking the password, the uh, command which we are going to make use is SSL login. If you get it, something like this. Yeah, SSS login, SSH login. Correct. So you got it. It's number 72. I had told you that you have to copy this and paste it. Right. We can do the same thing. You can make use of that number corresponding to that exploit. Yeah, 72. So you can simply write use space 72 and press enter. See, this is the auxiliary payload which is selected scanner SSH SSH underscore login. Let's go ahead. What we'll do is we have selected the scanner using which we are actually going to perform the attack. Now we will see what are the options available to us like we did last time. So show options again, try to find out only those which are required then the thing which we are interested in is this password file and user file because what is brute force brute force is basically something which we are uh, performing on the password and username yes 
so that is what we are going to uh, highlight over here it is not required then why we are doing it why we are changing it any answer in the last time uh, we actually knew what the vulnerability was but in this case there is no vulnerability so obviously the required field will be blank blank as a no because it is not expecting me to perform a brute force attack as we are performing brute force attack we need something related to the uh, username and password so that is the main reason why we are tampering or making changes to these attributes that is pass file password file and uh, username file that is user file clear so what we will do right now is we make use of word lists in real life because brute force is a very long process it takes hours days and even weeks if the password is very difficult to crack but in our case we know that the password is simple anyways we are simply learning how to uh, perform the hacking and how to protect against it we are not present over here to launch an attack on a real live website right so the learning to make the learning easier to make it quicker we will be using our own word list and for that what we need to do is simply follow along uh, what is that remote host so again we have mm -hmm. to target the remote host like last time we will do the same thing uh, set remote host as 192.168.0.159 so remote host is set and show options now we will do one more thing if you see carefully over here there is something called as verbose now you know what is a verbose for every failed attempt also it will show you the output so we want that otherwise we won't be able to guess the uh, uh, otherwise we won't be able to know ki actual password calls are so for that purpose i will do this set verbose as one uh, sorry not one true now let's see this now you can see verbose is set as true now only thing is we need to create that uh, password file and username file okay so for that i will create a file for that simply go uh, click on your desktop and create a document an empty text file give it a name i will give it a name as login ids or login ids dot txt login ids dot txt now once the file is created what i will do is so i'm creating the word list now save it save the word list and close it sorry save it and close it similarly i have to create a word list for my password file also so again repeat the same process create document go to empty file give it a name i will give it a name as password password.txt open it and again commonly used passwords i can type something like this qwerty 1234 uh, admin admin 12345 msf admin 123 fine okay now we have created the word list sample word list which we will be using to crack our password it will take some time so now how to set the user file and replace it with the file which i have created this user file has to be set with the one which i have just now created for that purpose you need the path of your username file or uh, login id file right so i will go over here and click on properties this is the path so what i will do is i'll copy this path go to the terminal set user_file then paste the clipboard slash the file name which is login ids dot txt done the same thing you have to use same way you have to use for password file okay so repeat the same task set pass underscore file paste that path slash i guess password was the name of that file dot txt press enter clear so we have now set it just to verify you can again show options uh, and yeah now you can see it is over there password.txt login ids.txt right so once we uh, do this step we have to set something which we uh, actually left uh, during the initial uh, initial process that is stop on success if i don't stop on success it will keep on guessing the passwords we have to make it true let's have a look stop guessing when a credential was 
works for a host so set stop on success to be true again verify stop on success true correct so all the values which were uh, required as yes we have completed them we have filled those values now it's time to run the exploit it's very simple if you have done this so far it's going to be really very simple the next step is simply you have to type run and press enter it is starting brute force it is failing on the first attempt as you can see this is because of verbos this is what verbos means you can see it is uh, printing every answer failed root query root admin query every user id is compared with every password one by one root query root 1234 root admin and so on this goes on and on until we reach msf admin because we know msf admin is the correct password and id it will stop over there this is because of that uh, label which we created stop on success to be true so this is success and this is nothing but the id and the password which we are looking for first is the id second is the password username or password 